welcome to the Let's Talk Genealogy with your host, Desi L. Campbell. Today, my guest is Cindy Atkins, and today we'll be talking about cemetery preservation and the importance of keeping cemeteries clean and preserving our heritage. All right, my first question to Miss Cindy is, what is, uh, what is the name of your group? We are the Dunn Area Cemetery Preservation and Genealogy Group. All right. And we're located in Dunn, and we're up under the Dunn Area History Museum. All right. And tell me what the purpose of your group is. Um, what we're trying to do is identify and preserve and promote the history of the cemeteries that are in the Dunn and greater Dunn area. And um, right now we have discovered about 12 or 15 grave sites that we are documenting and trying to get cleaned up. And uh, we're trying to get family involved in some of these cemeteries. Could you name it? Just a few of those cemeteries maybe? Um, we have found a Wade Cemetery. There is a Munn Cemetery. Um, there is a Two Cemetery that has um, some McLeans and Blues buried there. Um, then we have one at Old Bluff and we're doing the genealogy on it because on the death certificates it just has Old Bluff. Okay. How do you see this organization uh, benefiting the community? Um, it's getting the community involved, youth involved, and we're teaching them about their past and their history and trying to preserve everything that has gone on in the history of the cemeteries and stuff like that, getting them educated on their families and where they came from. And it talks, um, lets them know about the history of Dunn. Explain your feelings about preserving these cemeteries. It's just really taken effect last year when our Taylor Cemetery was moved and taken by the state and we had 22 unknowns and I didn't want them to go unidentified. And so I took it on, signed up with um, Ancestry and started digging to identify who was buried there. And it's just the history and the, that I have found that revolves around our family and where they came from and their involvement in Dunn has just took a hold of me. And I enjoy the history of um of what we found um it's just i don't think that the graves that are in the shapes they are in should be in there some of the families have died out and the younger people don't realize that their families are buried in these graveyards and getting the families involved will help preserve some of these cemeteries and getting them um, cleaned up yes i find it important um as well, and I have a heart for it as well, because that is pretty much history, uh, especially when you're going back into the 1800s. There's a lot of history in those graveyards, and, it, and those graveyards tell a lot of stories, a lot of stories that we may not necessarily know when you started to look in, in cemeteries, like family cemeteries, and you see names of people that you may not realize are your people. Uh, but you start researching them and then you find out that they are your relatives. Like uh, I was in a cemetery the other day in, in Ador, North Carolina. I just took off and went riding. <laughs> and I went to Ador to see to a family cemetery and I saw some names in that cemetery and I said, I need to take a picture of that grave because I think that may be a connection to my family, but I'm not sure. When I got back home, I tried to research, I tried to find that person couldn't find it. Um, and I finally found it later on, a couple of hours later, that they were who I thought they were part of that, part of the Campbell family. So that's, I really find it very important to make sure that we preserve these graveyards, not just in, in North Carolina, but everywhere. Um, <laughs> preserving graveyards tell the history. All right, so now we're going to talk about one graveyard in particular, and I am actually working on uh, Alexander McLean who is in this graveyard. So I'm going to let her talk about uh, the Two Cemetery. Um, yes, the Two Cemetery is located in Sampson County off Timothy Road. And there's two sections to the Two Cemetery. There, um, one is blocked off with cinder blocks and the other one is with a fence. Both of them are very well taken care of. Um, when you walk in, 
to the back section of the cemetery, there's probably five or six headstones there, but there's a lot of graves out there because you can tell by the indentions in the ground and trying to go back and find family members that are, um, that have family buried there. ancestry and just try to do the genealogy of it and connect with Daisy and he's helping with that and just letting them know him just finding out exactly how many are there. And what I find interesting about the two cemetery it is not only is uh, African Americans there and it's also uh, Caucasian uh, buried the same cemetery. So I find that very interesting and I'm sure that somewhere down the line there was may not be blood, it may be blood, we don't know. There's some kind of connection between the two families for them to be buried at the same place. Yes, and I feel like um, if they were, during that connection, each family thought of lot of each other for them to be buried in the same vicinity right there close together. I mean, basically they almost connect together. Yes. And oh. I mean, like finding some of the family members, they may have the heritage and some more of the history and the genealogy of who's buried there. Yeah. Because if they're unmarked, then we'll never know unless we connect with a family member that has got that Bible or papers wrote down or family history, you know, recorded somewhere to help us identify who's in those unmarked graves. And what we can do is once we, once we have identified the unmarked graves or the people, some of the people that's buried, that we can possibly uh, put something in the newspaper. Um, Correct. And on, of course, on Facebook as well to hopefully get the people to uh, that may be a part of those families to know that this is where their grave marks are. All right, let's talk about the Old Bluff Cemetery, which is you can tell us where it's located. Um, again, I find that cemetery very interesting because there's not only uh, uh, Caucasians, but it's also African Americans buried in this cemetery as well. Yes. Um, I did not know anything about the cemetery until I was at the um, genealogy roadshow and somebody there that I met um, got in touch with me and said, I want to take you to this cemetery. 
And so I go down and we can start walking in the woods and we bear off. And when you look at it, it's covered in nothing but English ivy. It's absolutely beautiful in there. It's very serene. Um, walking in there, you see three stones. And um, one of the names on there was a Hodges. Another one was a Bell, a Williams, and there was one more um, on there. Um, but when you start looking around, you start seeing wooden markers or you start seeing the, um, a pot and you can tell where that iron, that iron pot's at, that there isn't a grave there because it's indented. You'll also see um, big stones that are placed at grave mar graves to mark a grave as well. Um, I've kind of done some genealogy ancestry stuff on it and have discovered one of the family members and a lot of the family members don't even realize where this um, cemetery is at. And so just get in touch with some of the family and connecting with them um, is bringing back some information. They're very appreciative. She was um, the, the girl that I talked to today was very appreciative because she remembers her grandmother talking about her great grandfather being buried there. And so it makes me feel good knowing that I've helped somebody locate one of their loved ones, one of their ancestors. And so the plans are um, as soon as the um, snakes are gone um, to get out into that cemetery and get it cleaned up. Yes, William Henry Bell, the, one of the cemetery, one of the plots there is Jesse, Jesse J. Uh, Bell. And Jesse J. Bell is the son of William Henry Bell and Margaret, Ma Margaret, uh, to, in touch with that family um, to hopefully uh, let them know that that cemetery is back there, although grave markers are back there. Because he's buried, Jesse is buried out there, but his parents are buried at the King's Field, which is in Linden. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually been to that cemetery, and it is... I, don't, I, I probably couldn't go there again because I wouldn't know where it is, but it's kind of far out in Linden. I didn't even know Linden had that many roads. But when Andrew came in, I was there. I photographed all the grave markers there. And when I got ready to leave, I looked to my right, and all I saw was water. It was like big. I mean, <laughs> it kind of scared me. So I think it's by, I forgot what river they told me it is that's there right beside the graveyard. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, but we can definitely go out to that graveyard and check it out. Yes. Uh, but it's very clean, very clear, clean and clear. Um, do you have anything else you want to talk about uh, that may be helpful uh, with graveyard preservation? Um, if there's anybody out there that knows of graves, grave sites, let us know. Um, we kind of are stretching from the area of Dunn 15 miles out. Um, we'll be glad to get out there, help document, and do what we can to find who's buried there. Um, Desi and I have worked together, and I've enjoyed it. He's taught me a lot. And so um, the little things of talking to different people and finding these grave places, that's the only way you're going to get them preserved is through people getting out there and working in them. And, working and so in. if we have, yeah, if we have family that gets involved, educate our youth about them, hopefully one day that they'll, that'll grab hold of them. And when we're gone, it'll, they'll be the ones to carry on the preservation and keeping the cemeteries clean. Yes, I know one, one of my goals is to make sure I have documentation of each cemetery, um, uh, pre mm -hmm. preferably African-American cemeteries to, um, to document that stuff and make it available for people online so they can go online and look and say, okay, well, our relative was buried there. And if there's a tombstone or a death certificate, then if we have it, we can send it to them. Um, you know, because a lot of people in, that are from Dunn or from Hardy County or from anywhere down south, a lot of people up north never been here before. But that's important right. for me, that we can keep the, keep the legacy of those family members alive. Uh, because they did, they went through a lot, a whole lot yeah. back then, and to be able to just say that graveyard has disappeared, it just don't make sense. And without them, we wouldn't be here. We sure wouldn't. We sure wouldn't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week's show. We hope you enjoy the information 
about cemetery preservation. Next week, May 7th, we'll be doing a genealogy reveal for Joyce Carter Martin. On May 14th, Sand Hills Family Heritage Organization out of Spring Lake, North Carolina. And on May 21st, we'll be interviewing Dina Hill with the McNeil story. May 28th, we'll be talking about the Great Migration from Harnett County, North Carolina to Wayne and Newton County, Mississippi with Don Wright and Brian Hayes. Not knowing about your ancestry is like a tree with no roots. With something to think about, make it a great day or not, the choice is yours.